Hey friends, Tyler Patner here. Today we're going to talk about some do's and don'ts of air gunning or just shooting in general. Let's do this. First things first with the do's, guys. We got to talk about safety. You want to keep the same safety practices in place you do with your firearms, with your air guns. It's that simple. Those things are you got to make sure you know what your target is, where your target is, and what is beyond your target. Next, keep your finger off the trigger. Uh, booger hook off the bang switch, folks. It's very simple. Uh, keep it outside the trigger guard until you're ready to shoot. Number three, treat every gun you handle as if it's loaded. Even if you know it's not, it's just the smart thing to do. And last but certainly not least, keep any air gun, firearm, whatever you're shooting, pointed in a safe direction. If you don't intend to destroy it, you shouldn't be pointing your gun at it. Number two on our things to do list, uh, it kind of goes along with safety, but safety glasses specifically, that protective gear. Uh, these are my normal glasses, but they are rated to uh, stop an impact, you know, pellets, bullets, whatever. Uh, obviously not direct on, but a ricochet, it's gonna stop that. But make sure that if you don't wear glasses that you have safety glasses that are rated properly to stop any ricochets or things like that and keep your eyes safe at all times. Number three, this is uh, probably something that you're gonna say duh to, uh, but make sure you're using the right caliber ammunition with the, your air gun. It's really simple, uh, but especially with some of the big bores, we see this a lot. Uh, folks that will buy like 452 sized ammo for a 457 air gun. We try and do our best on the website to differentiate these things for you guys, uh, but sometimes folks get it confused or sometimes you have so many air guns, you just grab the wrong tin. So always make sure you're using the right caliber ammo for the gun you're shooting. Number four, simple one, read the manual. I know you hate it. I don't do it as much as I should, uh, but people take the time to write these so that you know how to properly use the product you've received. It's pretty simple and it can't hurt, all right? We all need toilet reading material, folks. Might as well be part of the regiment. And last but certainly not least, this is a personal do for me uh, to all of you guys. Buy more than one air gun. It keeps me making these videos, but more importantly, you can't have one air gun that does all things, all right? Uh, and quite frankly, let's be honest, none of you guys own just one, right? I hope not. But buy more than one. It's just simple. You know, you got to have like a good pistol to have fun with in the backyard and practice. You got to have a good rifle for pest elimination, target shooting. You got to have a lot of rifles, like a lot. Just buy a bunch of them, all right? Because uh, you need to. Now for the do nots. Don't treat your air gun like a toy. You should treat this with the same respect you do a firearm. These are powerful usually. Even your CO2 pistols can certainly damage property, people, all of the above. Treat them with the same respect in handling and shooting that you do your firearms. It's that simple. Number two, do not dry fire your spring and gas piston guns, all right? If you're not sure if you have a pellet loaded, go ahead, break it back open and make sure you do. It's really that simple. You dry fire one of these things, you do run the risk of damaging some of the internals. It just never ends well. So don't dry fire them, simple. Number three, do not overfill your PCPs. Now this goes back to reading the manual, but in the manual and printed on the gun is going to be the max fill pressure. You have a gauge on your tank usually to tell you how much pressure you're outputting into the gun. Most guns have a gauge on them to tell you how much air is going into it. Make sure that you're not overfilling it. Potentially damage things, uh, blow a burst disc, things like that. That could scare the crap out of you literally. So just make sure that you're following those safety practices when you are filling your guns with air, whether using a tank, a pump, or a compressor. Number four, do not use petroleum-based lubricants inside of your air guns. Any air gun, uh, petroleum-based lubes can potentially detonate or uh, combust, and that is not something we wanna do. A lot of air guns have high friction things going on inside of them, and uh, you just don't wanna tempt fate. So silicone-based lubricants are the way you wanna go. Make sure it's 100% pure silicone as well. Just uh, keeps everything nice and safe. And last but certainly not least at number five, we sell a lot of crossbows and we sell a lot of arrow firing air guns as well. One thing you don't wanna do is uh, try and screw on broadheads with your bare hands. It's a good way to cut yourself. There are a couple broadhead wrenches out there, makes getting these on and off really, really easy. And uh, something that you should absolutely have in your toolkit 
Go ahead and pop that off there. Nice and safe, never had to get near any of the cutting surfaces of the blades. It's just a good thing to have handy, costs a couple bucks, and uh, saves your fingers in the dark woods. So make sure you have one. Thanks for joining us today for our top five do's and don'ts of air gunning. We hope you found them useful. If you did, let us know in the comments below. If there's something we missed, let us know down there as well. Can't hurt, right? Uh, there's probably more than five, but those are my top five. So hopefully you guys agree with them. But like I said, if you don't, let us know in the comments and we will see you next time.